Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. We got a really big show for uh, the Horse Center fans. We're going to take a look at the Phillies for the Kentucky Oaks and go to Tampa for the Sam F. Davis. Yeah, I, I almost wish we were actually going to Tampa, but we're going to do it from the comfort of our own homes, Matt. Hey, there's our cover girl, Wonder Wheel, a very deserving Eclipse Award winner, Matt, last year as the juvenile Philly champion. Wonder Wheel for trainer Mark Cassie will make her reappearance this week also at Tampa Bay Downs. Where will she find her spot in our Kentucky Oaks rankings? We're about to find out but first we're going to start from the bottom up matt let's look at these uh, our top 12 our oaks dozen if you will we're going to start at number 12 that's a cult and i see the sire there matt is into mischief and into mischief is going to be a very important sire on this list yeah brian by my count i think we've got four on the in our kentucky oaks top 12 that are sired by into, into mischief, including a cult who was trained by Chad Brown and has two wins in her first three uh, starts, a maiden special weight and a win in the recent Busanda at Aqueduct. That's right, Matt. And, and perhaps somewhat surprisingly, she's the only Chad Brown that uh, makes our top 12. Although, and I, and I say this with these derby rankings as well. There were a whole lot of Phillies that we could have got into this top 12 that we considered strongly, including another Chad Brown Philly who claimed really close. That was Raging C. But a cult made the list, Matt. She looks like she's an improving Philly based in New York, as you mentioned. And she's won her last two, the Busanda. You never know what to make of those times in Aqueduct. It looks slow, but Aqueduct is often slow during the winter a cult might be developing into a philly that can move up this list yeah and i think that aqueduct theme and the times and how to uh, uh, evaluate them will pop up in this top 12 list again absolutely matt without further ado we're going to jump to number 11 there's not a whole lot to say she just made her debut recently matt do you like what you saw from bandita you, you got to bandita by by the great young sire uh gun runner from the barn of todd pletcher and by my count i think we've got three from todd pletcher in this uh kentucky oaks top 12 that sure was about as good a coming out party with that nine length victory going seven furlongs um that you could possibly have yeah, she looked good. She just debuted uh, a little over a week ago, and uh, that was down at Gulfstream Park. Gun runner, one of the top sires in the country. Matt, here's a quick question for you. Todd Pletcher, you said, has three Phillies on our top 12 rankings. How many times combined have the three Phillies lost? I'm going to say they have not lost, Brian, in a total of five races or so. Oh, you are on top of your game this morning, Matt. Well done. Yeah, the Todd Pletcher Phillies are all undefeated, but all lightly raced. Bandita being the most lightly raced of the three with only that debut performance at Gulfstream. But it was a pip. It was a good one. The next Philly on our list, Matt, number 10, is much more experienced, or at least she's had five starts for trainer Doug O'Neill. Pride of the Nile. Now, she has been beaten in her last two starts. But both of those starts, she gave a highly regarded Bob Baffert Philly all she wanted. One at Los Alamitos and then another at San Anita. Pride of the Nile looks like a Philly who's getting better, looks like a Philly who likes, will like nine furlongs, likes two turns. And Doug O'Neill has worked his magic before coming to Kentucky. Yeah. And like you said, Brian, uh, you know, just looking at the numbers, two wins, two losses, those losses were uh, – are are certainly good losses uh, running behind that uh, Baffert runner as Baffert is dominating everything out West. Well, we'll see where that Baffert runner, her name is Faza, by the way. We'll see where that Baffert runner lands on our list soon enough. Number nine on our list, Matt, there's a familiar trainer, Brad Cox. I'll be honest with you, the alleys look did not look 
great in her first two starts in Kentucky, although there might have been an excuse or two. Since she's gotten to New Orleans, though, she's been a whole different horse, a, a horse of a different color since she's gotten to New Orleans. She must like the cooking down there, Matt. Three good runs at fairgrounds. Yeah, you can't blame her for that. And, you know, Brad Cox uh, knows how to get these horses ready for these big uh, uh, prep races and and shooting for the goals of the Oaks uh, and the Derby. And the Alley's look is certainly uh, one of them broke her maiden at fairgrounds, came back and was second in the untappable. And then, you know, a very, very impressive victory uh, in the sur- silver bullet day. You got that right, Matt. Uh, it, it was a game performance in the Silver Bullet Day, and once she uh, was able to repel her stable mate, uh, another horse we certainly considered for this list. Her name is Chop Chop, and the alley's look uh, was the better horse in the late uh, the, the late yards of that uh, Silver Bullet Day. Before that, she wasn't the best horse in the field for sure, and uh, we're going to talk about the horse that beat her pretty soon in the untappable, but the alley's look certainly has blossomed uh, early this year for trainer Brad Cox. There's that man again, Todd Pletcher coming in at number eight on the countdown, Matt. Money's gold. Money's gold is, you know, we could have left her off this list. We could have had her higher on this list. Who knows? Some people doubt that Money's will sire a great horse at nine furlongs or more, uh, but Money's gold has looked awfully good in two starts that were separated by several months. Yeah, and, and I agree, Brian. You know, w- what to think of Money's Gold beyond the fact that right now we know that she is fast and very fast. She uh, uh, debuted, like you said, uh, early for a talented uh, two-year-old at that time in June at Monmouth Park, and she ran off the screen by 14 lengths uh, with a, a speedy, speedy time. We didn't see her for since then. We didn't see her until the end of January at Gulfstream Park. And you had to wonder, what's Money's Gold going to look like? Well, she went to the post at 10 cents to the dollar as the favorite. And you know what? She looked like the Money's Gold uh, from the summer again. A huge victory, more than six lengths. Uh, Both races have been sprints, like you said, Brian. So there is the big question mark about what's going to happen with Money's Gold as she stretches out. Yeah, Money's Gold could be any kind, as they say. I'm a fan of Money's, Matt. I think Money's can get those uh, middle distance horses. And the Kentucky Oaks at nine furlongs would fit into middle distance in my mind. So Money's Gold, definitely one to watch. I kind of like a horse that started out early at Monmouth Park, Matt. That brings me back to the early days when we used to see all those two good two-year-olds begin their career early in the summer at Monmouth Park. Number seven, Matt, maybe we could have had her hire. Her name is Leave No Trace. She's a, a New York-bred daughter of Outwork, trained by Phil Serpy, who's uh, kind of an underrated but very good trainer. She's run four times, and she's had a bunch of good races. She's a grade one winner. She was also second when we saw her last in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. You you could have put her higher. I guess maybe you could have left her off, uh, but I'm glad that we have her on the list for, uh, uh, you know, a uh, low-profile trainer in Phil Serpy, but a very talented trainer. And these days on these kind of lists – they are just dominated by the big barn, big name trainers and, and uh, leave no trace uh, was a maiden special weight winner uh, and the spin away winner at Saratoga third in the Frisette, second in the breeders cup, juvenile Phillies, all good performances. So uh, for a New York bred and Serpy, I hope she uh, keeps moving along uh, uh, on the Oaks trail. Yeah, she's working uh, for her return sometime soon. And that one third place finish in the Frisette was on a sloppy track. Don't forget, Matt. So maybe we can forgive her a little bit for that. But the other three races, certainly impressive for Leave No Trace. Okay, without further ado, let's get to the top of this list, the top half. One through six, Matt. Are you ready? Let's go. Here we go. Number six. Oh, I guess I mentioned her. I, I tipped you all off that pretty mischievous 
would be on this list, Matt. She was an impressive winner of the untappable over the alleys look at fairgrounds in her last start. And I think we're going to see pretty mischievous uh, soon get, a, get an even bigger test when she runs in the Rachel Alexandra coming soon at fairgrounds. Her only loss out of four starts for trainer Brendan Walsh was uh, to a horse that we obviously like. Who's your filly? Yeah, uh, uh, like you said, and then before that, uh, she uh, won uh, maiden special weight and an allowance at Churchill Down to begin her career. So uh, tough to uh, knock, pretty mischief. This yeah, tough to knock her and also flatters who's your filly uh, coming off that uh, loss she uh, suffered to her at Churchill Downs and then winning so nicely in the untoppable. Number five, I think a lot of people will have this horse higher on their list especially since she's trained by Bob Baffert. Undefeated in three starts, a daughter of Gervin. There's Faza. Uh, Pride of the Nile, though, like I said, has given her good races in her last two, two different tracks, La Salle, uh, Santa Anita. Uh, Faza, we would say she's the best out west so far. Yeah, certainly. But uh, there isn't a lot of uh, three-year-old fillies that are popping off the screen out west it seems like as opposed to the derby where maybe the west coast uh, uh trail has the advantage i think for the oaks uh, uh the better horses are a little bit farther east at this point probably so but uh, again undefeated phase of three for three a two-time graded <laughs> stakes winner there for trainer bob baffert out west number four on the list julia shining i guess we're going to learn some more on Saturday because she's facing off against Wonder Wheel in the Suncoast Stakes at Tampa Bay Downs on Saturday, Matt. Julia Shining, uh, you know, if, if you're looking at times of races, you're not going to take a shine to Julia Shining. But impeccably bred daughter of Curlin has been visually impressive, especially in that maiden race at Keeneland. Yeah, and then coming back from that for Todd Pletcher uh, to win the, the, the Demoiselle, at Aqueduct, and, and like you said, uh, the times are not impressive. The speed figures are not impressive compared to others. But from a great barn and a great family, um, you have to have Julia Shining on this list. But, yeah, facing the biggest challenge of her career uh, in the Sun Coast, a full field of 12 there. Boy, they got two great fields Uh for the three-year-olds at Tampa this weekend. Absolutely. Malathot's sister, by the way. And yeah. Malathot loved to uh, close resolutely, strongly, with a rush, all of those things. Malathot was tough to beat, as we saw last year in the Breeders' Cup, Ju uh, Breeders Cup distaff. Maybe her uh, younger sister has some of that same quality, the way she finishes off her races. Two for two so far for trainer Todd Pletcher. Here's one on the uh, list that uh, maybe not everybody knows about. And, and Rusty Arnold's a trainer that both of us have liked for a long time, maybe more on turf than dirt. And this filly's out of Oscar performance, who is really a turf horse. But there's some dirt breeding there. Red Carpet Ready has been on dirt, and she's looked good. She's three for three, Matt. Yeah, and just really popped up onto the uh, contenders list uh, uh, last weekend with her impressive victory in the forward gown. Yeah, she's bred to go farther, uh, you know, and, and her races in Kentucky, I think, you know, it, one was a maiden uh, at Keeneland, I believe, and the other one was a uh, listed stakes race at Churchill, but they were really, really good. So uh, we knew about her last year without having run in a graded stakes race, uh, but then she got to Gulfstream. Recently won that seven furlong uh, forward gal again impressively. She's never been farther than seven, but she should go farther than seven. And she looks like the real deal for another really good trainer, Rusty Arnold. Number two on our list, Matt, we've talked about her a little bit already. Wonder Wheel. She's going to make her debut against Julia Shining in the Sun Coast on Saturday. Wonder Wheel, really impressive last year, winning 405 with one second for trainer Mark Cassie another daughter of Into Mischief. Uh, she could easily be on everybody's uh, number one spot for the Kentucky Oaks, but uh, a very deserving number two, and we can't wait to see her come back here on Saturday. Yeah, absolutely. The champion, uh, two-year-old filly, I think uh, 
uh, easily the champion two-year-old filly with that great record. Uh, reminds me a little bit of another horse that came from the same connections of Mark Cassie and DJ Stable, that being Jaywalk, who had a kind of similarly impressive uh, a campaign as a two-year-old was the champion didn't come back quite as strongly the next year so it'll be interesting to see how wonder wheel does yeah and i and i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna trump you just a little bit on jaywalk because wonder wheel showed me something last year that really impressed me not only was she able to win stakes screening and then win stakes multiple stakes at two turns but the fact that she wired the grade one race at keeneland the alcb80s before going to the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. And then she was so far back in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies, and she looked even better coming from off the pace. So that's something that I re I don't remember Jaywalk doing, and Wonder Wheel's already done it. So a lot to like with a deserving champion, as I said. Number one on our list, though, Matt, is the one that uh, a lot of people are high on. I know I'm high on. I know trainer Tom Amos, who doesn't always rave about his horses like some trainers might. Another daughter of Into Mischief. He's been raving about Hoosier Philly way back when, Matt. Way back when she won a five and a half furlong debut race at Churchill Downs. Off that five and a half furlong race, Amos really wanted to run her in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. That's a big jump. She didn't get in off the also eligible list, but when she ran in two stakes races at Churchill Downs, which have we since mentioned have been flattered, she ran off the screen against stakes Phillies in Kentucky. Yeah, Brian, three for three. She's won her three races by a combined total of 14 lengths. Uh, Tom Amos, uh, like you said, a uh, 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 modest kind of trainer, but recently, uh, last year, won his 3,000th race. Um, had a lot of good fillies in his barn recently. Uh, hard to knock who's your filly. Hard to knock her, Amos. Uh, trained a, a Kentucky Oaks Philly very recently in Serengeti Empress. And this one certainly has impressed Amos more than Serengeti Empress did at this point in their careers. All right, Matt, that's the list. 12 top Phillies. Like I said, we left so many good ones off the list. But with a dozen, you can only get a dozen in the list, Matt. That's, that's just math, I guess. All right, <laughs> here we go. We're going to go. We're going to go back on the Kentucky Der Derby Trail. As Matt mentioned, the Sam F. Davis is being run at Tampa Bay Downs, Matt. And can I tell you how happy I am to see, look at that, 12 horses entered in the grade three, $250,000 Sam F. Davis Saturday at Tampa Bay. It's good to have a big field, Matt. Oh, yeah, absolutely, Brian. Maybe the most contentious field on the Derby Trail this year. I don't know if it certainly may not have as many big names as we have seen in some other races, but boy, Brian, uh, a really good field from top to bottom, hard to eliminate too many of them. Um, when it came time for me to uh, make a top choice, I had to spend a little bit of time uh, making a decision between three horses that I think are legitimate win contenders in here. Yeah, and, and it starts it starts with number seven, and I'm pretty sure WNL will be the favorite off his Remsen win last fall at Aqueduct. You remember that was on a sloppy track where he wore down Arctic arrogance in an impressive performance. Uh, WNL, it, it, I tell you what, if one horse in this race goes on to become a serious Kentucky Derby a candidate, a major Kentucky Derby candidate, it, for me right now, it would be WNL, and, and he's the deserving favorite, as I said. But on the other hand, as the favorite in this big field, he's a horse who both of his two wins have come on sloppy tracks. So there are questions as we look at the favorite WNL. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. Both of them on sloppy tracks, both of them at Aqueduct. Um, from his Remsen victory, he earned by far the highest speed figure in this field. Yeah, the Remsen was a good performance because Arctic Arrogance was not coming back and WNL would just not be denied in winning that nine furlong grade two Remsen. But if you look at that maiden win at Aqueduct 2, that was almost equally impressive because in the slop, he was he was sixth or seventh in the stretch and he just really kicked it in in that maiden win. So WNL, you know, th there's good reason to believe he'll be every good as bit on a, a every good bit as good. Easy for me to say. Every bit as good on a fast track as he is on a sloppy track. 
Uh, but uh, yeah, like we said, question marks for the favorite in a big field, a lot of interesting horses, a good betting race. Where do we go next? Let's start looking at these horses that I have kind of as co-second choices all the way down at six to one. We'll start with Classic Legacy, Matt. That trainer, Bill Mott, red hot. I, I feel like we almost have to pick Classic Legacy in this race because of what Mott's been doing lately in Florida. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. I feel the same way. Uh, into mischief. Um, this is kind of this horse appears to be the kind for Bill Mott that's developing a little bit later. Um, had an impressive maiden special weight victory at Aqueduct in December in his third try. But like you said, Brian, it, Mott, uh, not just that uh, at in Florida recently, but going back before that, his barn is about as hot as I can ever remember uh, from from my winning the Pegasus Gold, Pegasus World Cup with um, Art Collector, and then winning the recent Holy Bull um, with a horse that was a little bit of a surprise. Yeah, I Classic Legacy was one of the three that I was considering as my top choice. Yeah, Classic Legacy has a lot to like. He's improving for a, a barn that generally improves with good horses. That last maiden win was was impressive for sure. He rallied for second the time before that. He's also a half-brother. We didn't mention it yet. He's a half-brother to the Pegasus World Cup winner, art collector. Uh, owned the same owner, Bruce Lunds, Lunsford. And, and yeah, you have to respect the run that Bill Mott is on currently. Another co-second choice here on our odds, at least, is number nine, Champion's Dream, a son of the Triple Crown winner, Justified. Champion's Dream is the most experienced stakes horse in the race, Matt. He's a graded stakes winner, as is uh, as is the favorite WNL. But Champion's Dream has now been in three consecutive stakes races, and he's looked pretty good. He sure has. He, interestingly, he began his career in the barn of uh, Danny Gargan, um, Began his career at Saratoga with a maiden special weight win. Tried him in the Champagne, where he ran fifth. And then up to Aqueduct with a really nice victory in the grade three Nashua. I don't know the specifics and the reason, but after that, uh, he was transferred to the barn of Mark Cassie. Cassie gave him some time off, and he came back with a really nice late run in the Pasco at Tampa, uh, uh, the the first race on their derby trail uh, of sorts, and missed the win by a neck. I, 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 that's the kind of thing that we expect from Cassie, racing his horses into shape, and that was sure an excellent, excellent uh, prep race off the layoff for uh, that horse. Yeah, Champion Streams run uh, three good races out of four in his career. The Champagne, he really didn't do much, but the Champagne was also on a sloppy track, so maybe we can draw a line. But that was also the one stakes race that had some real class to it. I, I do worry that the Nashua and the Pasco were a little bit light on quality, so we'll have to see how he fares against another tough test here. But uh, a lot to like on his form, and Mark Cassie at Tampa Bay Downs is always tough. Like Matt said, a good prep over the track. Another one of those uh, co-second choices, if you will, here, Matt, is number 11, Litigate. Todd Pletcher has a lightly raced horse here in Litigate, and Litigate uh, has only started twice. He's looked good, breaking his maiden determinedly at Aqueduct and then running in a very loaded allowance race last time at Gulfstream Park. Yeah, that loaded allowance race. Um <laughs> interestingly uh uh more than a week ago uh was very exciting a week later you have to ask some question marks i'm talking about that allowance race where litigate was second behind uh cyclone mischief um for uh dale romans who uh, came back in the holy bull and just didn't run a lick so um you know if we're measuring Litigate's performance against that. Um, there's some question marks, but I liked what I have seen from this Pletcher horse. Yeah, yeah. And and Cyclone Mischief, you know, who who knows? Um, basically, I was told that uh, the horse had an had a throat issue in the race, and uh, 
was full of run until that throat issue presented himself. So we'll have to see about Cyclone Mischief. That could be an excuse for him, which becomes an excuse for Litigate last time. But we'll see. Litigate at two starts, breaking from the 11 hole against a tough field, going two turns for the first time. Th there's questions there. There's questions for Litigate. We'll see. But he could be a very talented horse for trainer Todd Pletcher. I threw up the... Pace projector, Matt, because we see Timeform US is telling us that this is an expected fast pace. And, and, a, and a couple of those horses who I think would be vying for the lead are outside with Litigate. And that might make Litigate's job even tougher uh, coming out of the, the, the post there. Dreaming of Kona and Zydeco. Zydeco is the horse, the speed horse who held off uh, Champion's Dream in the Pasco. And Dreaming of Kona ran a very good race in the Mucho Macho Man uh stalking legacy aisle the whole way and, and actually got put up in the mucho macho man so two quality uh speed horses on the far outside in what looks to be a race that uh, sets up with a fast pace yes absolutely so you know that that means we want to pay a little bit more attention to some of these horses that we've mentioned with good off the pace performances absolutely um I am a little surprised looking at this pace projector, Matt, and I don't know if this is true for you, that WNL is so close to this pace because I, I felt like, um, yeah, he was closer in the Remsen, but I'm not sure he's going to be normally that close, especially with a fast pace. So we'll we'll see about the favorite WNL, number seven. You can see the pace projector has him very close to this uh, fast pace. And uh, some other horses we talked about, including Champion's Dream, and uh, uh, Classic Legacy are going to be a little farther off the pace, Matt. Who else do we want to talk about in this race? Uh, number two, Prairie Hawk has, has won two straight at Tampa Bay, but they were very small fields, but he's got potential. Classic Car Wash has won two straight, another from trainer Mark Cassie. Although the long shot I'm looking at is Worthington. Worthington, Matt, breaking from the rail, which I don't necessarily love, but he's run a bunch of good turf races, and I see a lot of dirt pedigree there for Worthington. Yeah, but certainly uh, a, a very impressive beginning of his career uh, in those four turf starts. Um, if he can make the move from turf to dirt, um, interesting uh, horse at, who will probably be a really good price in, in this field. From the barn of Mike Maker, and and you know he's the he's the kind of trainer that can move horses from surface to surface. Yeah, yeah, he's certainly done it. We've also seen it done at Tampa Bay Downs, where turf horses come here early in their three-year-old season and run good races in their stakes race. So Worthington, who I think raced against really good turf horses last time, was third in a stakes race at Gulfstream Park. Now switches surface, and will be a pretty big long shot in this full field, Matt. Let's take a quick look at the um, Horse Racing Nation track trends. And I, I think this is a little different than when we looked at Gulfstream Park last week. I, I think there was more of a speed fav favoring nature to the trend at Gulfstream Park in two turn races coming in to the Holy Bowl. And, and Tampa Bay Downs just strikes me over the years and strikes me here in this track trend of the last 44 races as a more fair track where you can win from anywhere. Yeah, it looks that way, uh, Brian. Certainly, uh, they don't have many rate, many full field uh, races with uh, 12 horses in them. But uh, yeah, I agree with what you said. Yeah, and, and even, even outside posts, uh, Tampa Bay Downs, yeah, those numbers look small for seven and beyond. But the average race uh, of these 44 races was under seven. So they didn't get a lot of chances, and they still were able to win 16% out there from the seven. Uh, you know, being on the early lead, as as is true in, in, in most two-turn races, is still an advantage. But it's not a big advantage, as you see a lot of winners coming from the stalker and closer positions as well. That's our track trends for this Sam F. Davis. Matt, is there anybody else you want to mention in this big field? Uh, you know, uh, to me, it, it's an interesting betting race. Uh, not easy picking out your winner, but I think there are several horses, and I think we've mentioned some of them, that could easily get into the exotics, the exacta, trifecta, superfecta. I, I expect some uh, really generous payoffs in those uh, exotics. Yeah, well said, Matt. I agree, and uh, I'm going that way. Let's see our top picks here for the Sam F. Davis. I think we're going to include the winners, too, because as you know, it was postponed to this week. 
it's almost the same field as it was if it had been run last week. So let's take a look at our top picks. I'm going to let you go first with the Sam F. Davis. As I was mentioning, you know, I, I had to tussle between the top three that we mentioned, but I ended up going with uh, Champion's Dream. Um, I liked that prep race that Mark Cassie put into the horse. It's kind of the way Mark Cassie does things, uh, runs him into shape. And I think that Pasco may have done the trick. Um, I don't know. I think possibly he will be the third choice out of those um, top three that we mentioned. So I went with Champion's Dream. Yeah. Well, we had him as a, as a three-way co-second choice so yeah any anywhere from second to fourth would be it seems reasonable and and yeah six to one or so on a mark cassie at tampa bay downs uh should get good value on a, on a nice horse i'm afraid of the favorite a little bit matt w and l but on the other hand i want to try to beat him coming to a faster surface than he's been winning on champion streams one classic legacies another that uh makes a lot of sense to me here but I laid it on Worthington. I, I think Worthington has shown me that he really fits in with this field on a class level in his four turf races. In fact, I, I like his races on grass about as much as any horse in the field. And that's good for a horse who's certainly going to be double digits. Just a matter of the surface, but I like the pedigree, like what we said about Mike Maker. So I'm going to give a shot to Worthington here as a bomb in the Sam F. Davis. Uh, the Withers, I guess we don't have much to say because we talked about the Withers last week. I guess one horse was added to the field, but we still like Hit Show to rally and win the Withers at Aqueduct. We do, but, we, but it is interesting to note that the one horse that was added comes from the barn of Bill Mott. So might be a horse that is, uh, uh, could sneak into the picture if Mott keeps, uh, keeps that barn hot. Yeah, yeah, that horse is not a throwout by any means as well in that Withers. But we're sticking with Hitcho as our top pick, but we got some real odds for you in the Sam F. Davis. Hopefully we can cash in big this week on Horse Center. But before we go, can I get a parting shot from you, my friend? Yeah, Brian, absolutely. Hey, this is a, a, a great uh, card at Tampa this weekend. There are two other stakes races uh, on the card also. Um, making I, I I'm not sure if they're in a pick four, but those uh, there are a couple of sprint stakes that have big contentious fields also. So enjoy the racing around the country, especially at Tampa Downs. Tampa Bay Downs, yeah. Well, Wonder Wheel against Dreaming of Julia is one of those other stakes races. So that's that's huge. Let's see what happens. It'll be fun. Hopefully we all have good luck. I want to thank our friend in Louisville, Candace Curtis, for the race graphics. Our sponsor, Derby Wars, the best contest site out there. And, of course, Timeform US for their very helpful pace projections. Most of all, I want to thank you all for watching each and every week here on Horse Center. We should, sure do appreciate it. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and do it now. Matt and I will be back with another big show next week. We will be talking fairgrounds. Kentucky Derby and Kentucky Oaks preps next week in New Orleans. We'll see you then. Have a good week.